hallways are dark, the building is dark, the, the whole project is dark. It's like a war zone out here. And they have people in wheelchairs that they can't get downstairs, the elevators are out, of course. They're walking to the sixth floor. It's bad out here. They just now started pumping today, but we don't have Con Ed out here. We don't have none of that services out here. They're not even coming. Well, my name is Samora Coles, and I am a former employee of the Rehoboth Initiative. Uh, just recently, maybe a year and a half ago, but um, this is still part of my home, and it's part of my community. So I come back every now and so often to volunteer um, what needs to be done. So unfortunately, due to the drastic uh, devastation that happened a, a day or two ago, uh, the people in the Rehoboth community are out without food, uh, water, lights, um, and, and a lot of the basic needs. And so the, what the Red Hook Initiative has done, they collaborated with a group of volunteers uh, who are going way beyond their means to donate and to, to give uh, food and clothing, fresh water. Um, I'm Lisa Cowan. I'm on the board of the Red Hook Initiative. I think Occupy Sandy people who are alumni of Occupy Wall Street um, sent out the word that uh, we needed food and so this is sort of a combination of residents, volunteers. It's one of the only places in the neighborhood that retained electricity during the storm so we opened our door in part because um, nobody could get any information, nobody could plug in their phones so we're here for just, we opened up our plugs to the community, people started pouring in and then volunteers showed up with food. Um, People have been calling us, tweeting us, Facebooking us to say what can they do. And so what we're trying to do is get people to drop off non-perishables, candles, um, flashlights, batteries. One of the biggest things we're hearing from people who live in the house is just how dark it is at night. And now it's starting to get cold. My name is Amelia and I just responded to a call online through an Occupy website that they needed volunteers down here today. This is um, the Red Hook Initiative. So this is always open doing community involvement things. So they've just let us kind of come in and use their space and serve food and collect uh, donations from the neighborhood. So we've been here since around 10 a.m. today. We had breakfast, we've had hot lunch, we have snacks all day, um, and then we're gonna serve hot dinner at six o'clock. Um, I'm Monica Byrne, I'm one of the owners of Homemade and Rocket Catering. Uh, this is my kitchen. And uh, what happened Monday? Well, um, we had a big storm. <laughs> we, uh, actually most of Red Hookers were staying put. Most of us were all in communication. We'd organized, you know, lists online so everybody knew who was open, who was closed, who had what resources. And we were all, a bunch of us sitting here, playing cards, uh, listening to music, when uh, the water started coming up Pioneer Street. Slowly, but slow fast. Kind of, it wasn't like a tidal wave, it was just slowly crawling at a rapid speed. And in about 15 minutes, it went from the end of Pioneer and Imlay by the water to our front stoop and up about a foot. I don't believe it. I don't believe what I'm seeing, you know. I, I never in my life, I'm 56 years old, I never in my life get scared like Monday night. Never in my life, you know. Selwyn and Critchlow, and my address is 99 Pioneer Street, Brooklyn, New York, the Red Hook area. What we experienced on Monday was the worst part of a storm. We had water that completely filled the basement. The cars were all, almost submerged in water. There were just debris all over the place, things. It was just chaos in the place. It was just chaos in the place. You see, the electricity went, you see, and it was like all man to himself. You see, it, it was like man against Mother Nature, and Mother Nature won. I would not wish a, a storm like this on my worst enemy. I would not wish a storm like this. It just shuts life down. It just shuts life down. And it make man, actually make man realize who he really is. See? You give you time to, to actually think on yourself and see who you really are. You see, what purpose do you really have? You see, so there's a lot of self-searching that goes on. Even enemy become a friend at time like this. My name is Corbin Ledline. I'm the Youth Empowerment Program Coordinator here at Added Value um, and we operate the Red Hook Community Farm which is where we at, we're at now. Um, basically the farm was, was completely flooded. It seems like 
At some points, judging from the marks in the greenhouse, it was it was up to around four feet, um, and uh, so all the crops were covered um, with water from from the harbor. Uh, so we won't be able to sell any any of that anymore. I I grew up in Red Hook. There are people on my block who lived in Red Hook for you know decades and decades and have never seen anything like this. Um, and I think I hope hopefully now this is the wake up call. Um, I heard that, you know, I don't have electricity, so I haven't been listening to the news and stuff, but I heard that Governor Cuomo mentioned climate change, and so that was like a drop in the, you know, something good, but, you know, the fact that it wasn't mentioned at all during the presidential debates is just completely ridiculous, um, especially when things like that, this are happening. I have a feeling this is going to become the new normal in, in a, a world where temperatures are rising, uh, sea level temperature, sea surface temperatures are rising, so, you know. I, it needs to be. It needs to be an issue we're talking about and figuring out how to address it. And how do how do local farms fit into the uh, solution? Uh, well, actually, I think many people argue that local farms are the solution. You know, our industrial agriculture agricultural system is is based on using fossil fuels and for for pesticides and natural gas. We ship food all across the country, and it just doesn't make sense. We need to localize production to reduce our carbon footprint. Um, and this is a group awesome group via Campesina says that, you know, small-scale farming, peasant agriculture will cool the planet, and I, I think many people are, are catching on to that.